What is the best age to claim your Social Security benefits? 62, 66, 70? That is the subject of this video. Welcome to another episode of the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do first here is get a copy of your Social Security statement for both you and or your spouse if you're married. Now, if you don't have a copy of the statement, you're gonna to wanna to go to the ssa.gov website and create an account. Um, you should definitely do that, both you and your spouse if you're married. You're gonna be able to access the statement and on there, um, among other things, you're going to be able to see and check your earnings history. And so you really want to look at that and make sure it looks accurate to you because um, the Social Security Administration is definitely um, capable of making some mistakes as well as your employer so over the years could have made a mistake in reporting as well. So it's really important that you get credit for everything that you've paid into the Social Security system. Now, they're going to look at your best 35 years to determine your benefit. And so, um, if you're earning more now than you have in the past, every year you're gonna bump off one of the lower earning years. So there can be some advantage, uh, just making sure you understand that. Now, you have to have at least 10 years of work history to qualify for your own benefit. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have any earnings history to qualify for a spousal benefit if your spouse qualifies, right? So on the Social Security statement, they have some numbers. They're going to show you what your PIA is. That stands for primary insurance amount. And that is the dollar amount that is considered to be your full benefit at your full retirement age. They will also show you um, what your benefit would be if you delay until age 70 to claim. And they'll also show you what the dollar amount would be if you were to claim at the earliest age possible of 62. Something else that is really important to understand is that um, if you are eligible to receive benefits and you contact the Social Security Administration, they are gonna be more than happy to turn on or start those benefits. And so they are not um, allowed to provide any kind of planning advice. They're just going to answer questions and they are really not in the business of optimizing your benefits. So you just want to understand that. You may be familiar with uh, Larry Kotlikoff. He's a professor from Boston University. He is widely known as an expert in Social Security, uh, the interworkings. When Congress needs an expert, he is one of the guys they call on to help understand the details. He probably understands the interworkings of Social Security better than about anyone. So let's take a look at this quick video clip and see what he has to say on this subject. If you look at the Social Security Handbook describing all the provisions for about Social Security benefits, it's uh, got 2,728 rules. And they're written in a language that nobody can understand. Then there's uh, a set of rules to explain those rules. That's called the Program Operating Manual System. And that's got maybe 100,000 rules to explain the 2,728 rules. So actually, Social Security is actually more complex than the federal income tax when you look at it carefully. It's easy to make big mistakes because it can cost you $100,000, $200,000, $400,000 if you make the wrong mistake as we uh, would calculate this as, in terms of your lifetime benefits. First of all, you need to realize that Social Security provides a very good deal for waiting to collect. And you, you, you have to plan to live to your maximum age of life because you might. So giving up some years of, of lower benefits to get many more years of higher benefits is worth considering. Then there's also extra benefits that you can get. You can get, if you're married or divorced, spousal benefits. If you're widowed, uh, spousal or survivor benefits. If you've got a young child, children's benefits, mother and father benefits. So if you're not aware of these benefits, you're gonna miss out on those. And then the third thing is that you have to be careful about taking which benefit when, because when you take one benefit too soon, you can wipe out the other benefits rather than getting them both. So retirement planning is surprisingly complex and confusing. And there are literally hundreds of different ways in which you could claim your benefits from a strategic standpoint. And so 
how are you going to get it right and how are you going to figure out you know what is the best option for you um, your age is certainly a factor your marital status and the age of your spouse um, your marital history if you've been divorced or not um, there there's all kinds of rules around collecting benefits from um, an ex-spouse what, what's your health situation your longevity for you and or your spouse uh, there are other spousal considerations. What other assets do you have for, for retirement income? What is your employment status? How many more years do you plan to work? Um, are you going to work part-time? Um, all of these are really important pieces of information to make a good decision. The number of years that you've actually worked. What does your tax scenario look like? What about your housing and your equity in your home? There are strategies associated with Social Security that can make a really big difference on, on each of these points. Um, what are the survivor benefit needs? Um, are there minor children? Do you have disabilities? If you can qualify for a Social Security disability, you could get a larger benefit if you're, you're under your full retirement age. And so that may make a lot of sense for many people. Um, and then what is the actual need for income? How great is the need? Um, all of these um, make up the mix in determining what is the best strategy. So just some basic definitions to keep in mind. The FRA, your full retirement age, that is the age the Social Security Administration considers to be the age in which you would receive your full benefit. And it's gonna be based off of your date of birth. The, the PIA, the primary insurance amount, that is the dollar amount that you would get at your full retirement age. And then, of course, we have the SSA for the Social Security Administration. Now, if you were born between 1943 and 1954, then your FRA is age 66. And for every year beyond 54, you add two months to your full retirement age, all the way up to age 60. So it looks like this. 1943 to 1954, full retirement age, 66. 1955, your full retirement age is 66 and two months, 66 and four months, 66 and six months, and so on. Um, and then if you were born in 1960 or later, your full retirement age would be 67. So I think this chart is really helpful to get a visual. Um, this is assuming that your full retirement age is 66. If you claim at the earliest age possible, 62, you will be taking a 25% reduction in benefits and that's a permanent reduction for the rest of your life. If you wait just one more year, it's a 20% it's a reduction. Another year, it's only 13, and so forth. Once you reach full retirement age, you would then be eligible to receive your full retirement benefit. If you were to delay just one year, you're gonna get a guaranteed 8% increase in the benefit. Another year, another guaranteed eight, and so forth, all the way up to age 70. Now, there is never a, any reason to delay past 70. There is no benefit. Um, so the latest you would ever want to claim would be at age 70. Here's another visual to kind of put some, some dollars to it. Um, in this example, we're going to assume, you, again, you have a full retirement age of 66, and your, your benefit in this example being $2,663. So if you went ahead and claimed at 62, you'd be getting 1,997, um, which is only 75% of the full benefit. You wait one year, and you can see what that looks like. Um, and each year that you wait to claim, you can see how that would increase. And then at age 66, you would get the full benefit. Age 67, you're, you're getting that guaranteed 8%. And then for each year thereafter, you can see that really grows nicely. We're over $4,000 if we, if we also include the, the cost of living adjustments, you know, the average it has been, which is about 2.8% per year. And so it's really a, a really big difference, $2,000 versus $4,000. But of course, there's many years of not receiving benefits um, when you delay, right? And so there's, so how do you weigh and consider what is the best option? Also, if your full retirement age is 67 instead of 66, that gives you one last year. So if you were to claim at 62, 
it's, it's not 25% reduction, it's a 30% reduction. And then you only have three years of the delayed credits, so you can't get quite as much you know, when you're full retirement age of 67. And so if we look at everyone who's receiving Social Security benefits today in the United States, it's a, a, a large majority, 74% claimed early. And so that means only 26% are receiving what is considered their full benefit or an increased benefit. So let's break this down and look at the claiming trends over time. If we go back to 1996, there was about 56% of men and 63% of women that claimed at age 62, the clear majority. But by 2013, it was just 42% of men and 48% of women claiming at 62. And then by 2018, it was 27% and 31%. So more and more people are recognizing that it is often to their advantage to not claim at the earliest age possible, but to claim sometime after that. Now, is claiming early the best option? Um, for some people, sometimes, yes it is. It's not gonna be for everybody because you can leave a lot of money on the table. You've really gotta consider all these other factors. So when we're talking about total lifetime cumulative benefits paid out from Social Security, Let's assume a life expectancy of age 85. Um, the green would be delaying, and uh, the, in the red here, we're looking at claiming early. So the difference being, the total cumulative payout is the difference of $324,000. So that's a lot of money, and that's mostly coming in those last five years. So if you live past 80, it's about a $324,000 difference that you're getting in those last five years of life. Um, so that's it's a lot of money so something to really think about now what if you live to say 95 then it's a, a, a huge difference right we're looking at about six hundred thousand dollars more money that you could receive by delaying your benefits over claiming them early so there's a crossover point everyone has a crossover point um, it's typically going to be around age 80 but if you live past age 80 then there is more benefit money that you could receive. And so now, again, we're just talking about the gross payout because if, if we're not taking into account taxes here or the other things that could actually decrease your Social Security benefits. And so um, it could look quite different based on some other factors. So you wanna keep that in mind. Now, you know, the big the terminology that you hear a lot is maximizing your Social Security benefits. How do you maximize and get the most? Well, you know, we can look just at the math and we can make some decisions based on what is the maximum amount. But what is more important is, is having optimized retirement income. And that comes through a comprehensive retirement income plan. If you think of your Social Security as kind of one separate thing all by itself, and then you think of any other assets that you might have or your home and these other things all separate of each other, that's a mistake. It's really in the optimizing and the coordinating of all these things, including taxes, that, that really is going to give you the most income sustainable over your retirement. Will Social Security be there for you? That is a, a legitimate question and one that weighs heavy on a, a lot of people's minds because of our huge national debt and deficits. We do have an aging population and a shrinking workforce. 75 million baby boomers started to retire uh, back in 2011, we're retiring at a rate of about 10,000 people every single day, which is an average of 3.6 million people per year. And it will continue at that same rate for the next 12 years. Never before have we had a shrinking workforce and a growing retirement population. And so there's there's fewer and fewer people who will be working and contributing into the Social Security system with more and more pulling on its resources. According to Social Security, the trust funds will be depleted without any reforms. Um, and so they're able to continue their current trajectory for about 15 years. At that point, the Social Security trust fund is empty, and then it is estimated that the, the new taxes coming in from the workforce would be enough to support about 75% of the Social Security benefits. Now, I don't believe that's going to happen. I don't believe the American people are going to allow it to happen. 
And so if you have concern about Social Security not being there for you, I would shift that concern to taxes are likely to be a lot higher in the future. And Social Security is only one of the reasons why, that, why that's true. And so one of the biggest strategies um, that you want to be aware of is optimizing your retirement income so that you can avoid the taxation on Social Security. It is possible for most people, but you got to have a good plan and you got to know what you're doing. Now, I have other videos and information where we can we, we go into some of those details, but just that one strategy of avoiding taxation on your Social Security benefits will add, on average, about seven years to your retirement income. It makes a huge difference. And so again, what is the best strategy? What is the best age for claiming your Social Security benefits? It's going to be very different for each person. I want to make this easy for you. We can provide you with a professional Social Security analysis and strategy report, customized for your specific situation. It's a comprehensive, detailed, 20-page report, um, and yet very easy to read summary where you can consider uh, the different strategies and what that may look like in your situation. Doing this and getting, making a good decision here could easily save you thousands of dollars in retirement. If you're interested in this, um, it is available for a nominal fee. Uh, there's a direct link in the description below, but you can also just go to socialsecuritylane.com and uh, get more information about how to get your own personalized social security uh, strategy analysis. If you have interest in that, you can click below for more information. I hope you found this educational and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.